This device is a continuous glucose monitor or CGM. It continuously measures level of your blood glucose or your blood sugar in real time. It was first introduced for people with diabetes so that they don't need to prick their fingers all the time to get the readings. But it didn't take long for the general public to realize that this tool is incredibly helpful even for non-diabetes. Before I go into the details of what I've learned in this 100 days of wearing CGM, I I want to tell you why I wanted to get a CGM and wear one to begin with. For me, mainly there are two reasons. And the first one is stable energy and secondly, weight control. I'm sure all of us are very familiar with the afternoon slump where your energy level dips after lunch. And do you want to know what caused that? Mainly it's because of what we eat. Comparing to protein and fat, our bodies can actually digest carbs pretty quickly, which means that when we eat carb rich foods, our body easily breaks down these carbs into glucose or sugar. And this glucose just rush straight through to our bloodstream Dream, which causes a high spike in our insulin level. When this happens, normally our body produces insulin in order to bring or direct this sugar out of our blood into our cells for later use or for storage, which then brings blood sugar level back to normal. Our body is so incredible and this process works great if there is a small sugar spike. However, with higher sugar spikes, for many of us, our bodies just release too much insulin which then cause a very low dip in blood sugar after the meal and this is what caused the feeling of being lethargic or tiredness. Secondly, weight control. Now the thing is foods that really highly spike our blood sugar levels are the foods that are rewarding in nature. So for example, things like donuts, pasta, bread. Have you ever noticed why it's so easy to overeat on those foods rather than overeating on steak or kale, for example? And because these foods cause so much fluctuation in sugar level, when our sugar level is low, our bodies tell us to eat more. Our bodies tell us that we are hungry when we actually not. When our sugar is stabilized, then our bodies tell us that we are full. Now, Lately, I've been on a body transformation journey myself and as a 37 year old woman I have become frustrated when it comes to weight management and weight control and I thought getting a CGM will help and these two are the main reasons why I bought CGM to begin with but again because the device measures your own glucose level the result will be very specific to you and your body may process certain foods differently than mine but regardless here is what I learned after wearing CGM for 100 days I actually thought that there would be certain foods, you know, those usual suspects that would raise my blood sugar higher than others. So bread, for example, is highly processed. The ones that we buy from supermarket, they contain yeast, sugar, and all sorts of things. And I thought that a piece of bread would raise my blood sugar way higher than a wild rice would. However, that could not be further from the truth for me. As you can see, I had half a pita bread with butter and I looked at the carbs content and half a pita bread contains around 13 grams of carbs. And did it raise my blood sugar? Yes, it did. However, if you compare the level of the spike with the time where I had white rice, you see how white rice raised my blood sugar way higher than half a pita bread did. And this is why I find getting a CGM is so interesting because you're bound to learn all these things about your body and how your body process foods that you would never thought it does. Secondly, I also learned that protein does increase glucose too. There is so much stigma about carbs and carbs raising your blood sugar. You know, we all know that. I think majority of population is now becoming aware of the fact that carbs do that. Might not be as bad or as high of a spike as carbs do, but it still does. Because I'm on a body transformation journey, I have incorporated intermittent fasting into my nutrition. 
or lifestyle, I would say lifestyle. So every Sunday after lunch, I would fast for 20 hours and then I'll eat again Monday morning. And at the beginning, it was extremely difficult, obviously, to not eat for 20 hours. So I sorted help by drinking bone broth. And this is homemade bone broth. I make broth every week. I know it's full of collagen, it's good for my skin. And bone broth contains loads of minerals, nutrients, and of course, protein. And what I've noticed is there is a little spike, I mean, not very high after drinking bone broth, due to the protein content. You may have heard people say, if you want to eat certain carbs still, but minimize your sugar spikes, then all you need to do is eating things in order. So the first thing to eat is vegetables, and then secondly, protein, fat, and then you can eat your carbs. And for me, that doesn't always work. My partner brought us sushi, which I knew with white rice, it was going to spike my blood sugar so much. So I thought, okay, maybe I should eat a salad first. So I had tuna salad first with a bit of olive oil and wait around five minutes and then I continue eating the sushi. And to my surprise, when I checked my phone, looking at my glucose graph and my blood sugar went through the roof. So although having veggies first for certain people before having calves might work in terms of reducing their blood sugar spike, for me, Unfortunately, it just didn't work. I also found that sugar substitutes or artificial sweeteners do raise my blood sugar. If you Google online, most sources will say that these substances will not raise your blood sugar because they're not real sugar. But I have had many occasions where I had Diet Coke, Pepsi Max, and even trying things like stevia drops, which stevia is derived from plants and really shouldn't raise your blood sugar, but it's just not the case for me. All these things actually spikes my blood sugar pretty high. Thinking back, when I used to have I love diet fizzy drinks. I used to have Diet Coke all the time, but there was one thing that I noticed was that every time after I had Diet Coke, I would have this feeling of being a little bit peckish, like I was hungry. And this explains why I was feeling that way, because these things raise my blood sugar level and it caused a massive dip after, which made me hungry. Another thing I learned is that physical activity has a very favorable impact to your blood sugar regulation. I normally go to the gym in the morning. I go to the gym faster before I eat anything. And I have noticed a certain pattern that the days that I go to the gym, my blood sugar will be lower than the days that I don't go to the gym in the morning. There has been studies that support this as well. If you go for a short walk, even though it's five minutes or 10 minutes walk, after a meal, it will help you lower your blood sugar spike and regulate and stabilize your blood sugar after a heavy meal. After wearing CGM for the first two months, I started to get a hang of things. I started to understand the impact of certain foods on my body and I started to eat better because I knew my body can process those foods better and eventually I felt better. But there was one thing that I wondered and I think this could be beneficial to a lot of us. What if you're someone who has maybe not diabetes but your blood sugar level is a little bit higher? How soon can you expect the change in your glucose level if you were to change your diet and your lifestyle? So I went on a sub experiment on top of the CGM experiment, I changed my food completely and I went 10 days just doing a very low carbs diet. And I wanted to see in the periods of 10 days how much of an impact it would have on my blood sugar level. And as you can see, there's a clear trend that 
if we were to control the amount of carbs that we eat, it doesn't actually take that long for the change in the diet and lifestyle to translate into an improvement in fasting blood sugar level. So in conclusion, I can honestly say that this device changed my life and how I see food forever. I used to be in the mindset that I would only eat healthy food because it would just have an impact on my body aesthetically but really truly understand how food impacts my body and my health just changes everything now i'm not obsessed with foods in terms of whether it's going to make me big but whether this food is going to be good for me for my health and my longevity which is frankly way more important than how i look externally it also answered a lot of questions that i used to have because i felt certain ways eating certain food but I never really had an answer for and which then helps me to choose the diet that is right for me and helping me stick to it as well in the world that there's so much information out there and in a world where we are trying our best to understand everything and what's going on understanding our own body is probably the most valuable thing out there so if you want to try it yourself then i would really encourage you to get one this video is not sponsored by anyone or any company i hope you enjoyed this video i'll be posting my body transformation journey in this channel so if that is something that you want to see then do subscribe and stick around Bye.